Hey, I'm Ryan. And, and I'm Richard. Really and we're back with more Crystal Clans. Yep, this is our third game we played um, that day, and, and I'm playing the Skull Clan on the right. And I'm playing Leaf Clan on the left. Again, still trying to give some love to the expansion clans because I think they're cool. Yeah, and I get to play all my favorite clans too. I like Blood and Skull and like it's funny that like usually I'm not kind of a aggro type player in card games like these, but I don't know. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with these with these races and it's neat to see all the different play strategies. I think I keep my whole opening hand here. Oh wow, yeah, so I'm uh, reshuffling three. Mm -hmm. So the thing about Leaf Clan, your opening hand is really important with Leaf Clan. So their ability is that when certain units die, they go face down on the board and then you can play units from those uh, face down spots. So it's important to get, and it's called regrow. So it's important to get some regrow right, units in your opening it. hand so that way you can send them out, have them die, and then now you have summon points. Yeah, they're kind of like, they make trees out of dirt, you know, so you got to get dirt all over the battlefield. So yeah, you so you, spawn. You, have a, you have a sapling, you send him out, and then he dies and he becomes fertile soil. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome mechanic. And then the uh, way that blood works is that, or skull rather, they're kind of like a, a necromancer clan and they, they, they have some living units and they have some undead units. They have like ancestral knights and warriors who are undying, meaning that they, uh, you know, they can be resummoned to the, uh, the battlefield at a, uh, a necromancer if, if I have one on the board. So there's like a necromancer unit and then there's a, um, a uh, what's it called? The Enchanter Malik is like a super necromancer. Um, but yeah, so they, they basically try to use their discard pile as a resource as opposed to uh, just trying to replenish a lot and, and getting those things. Because the Undying ability means that you can summon a unit from your discard pile as if it were in your hand. All right, so turn uh, very first action. We're looking at uh, Clawkin Shifters, who um, he's not a regrow unit himself, but when he <laughs> kills a unit in battle, that unit becomes fertile soil. Yeah, and that's important against me because if I if I have things die, and then you know I'd like for them to go to the discard pile so that I can resummon them. But if you're just gonna put them in the dirt and lock them up, then it's like they're in undead jail, and I, I can't use them anymore. Yep. At least until they, you know, you you build something there, and then they go to my discard pile. And then, uh, so here's me hard casting an ancestral knights, um, which usually like they're they're three costs, and they are um, four attack and four defense. Well, it's and, not so much the cost, but usually with uh, undead units like ancestral knights and ancestral warriors, you don't pay a card for it because you get it out of your discard. Well, yeah, you don't pay a card for it, and also there's a card that you'll see later called Bone Knife Cultists that allow you to uh, summon reanimated units when they die. So, um, typically, that's how you're getting the knights into play is from getting them in the discard pile and sort of cheating them in. All right, looks like you're setting up saplings on the blue zone. And clock in shifters in the uh, orange zone, and we're going for just immediate rush out the crystal uh, zones, leave nothing at home. Yeah. So, looks like definitely not too scared of you milling me, because, you know, beginning of the game, deck is still full, and it probably wouldn't. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, right? Like, I'm looking at the option. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but probably just want to get my stack together. Um, the ancestral warriors and the knights, they both activate on a one. Uh, warriors only cost two, and they, uh, they're a 2-2 two -two unit, but they have a really interesting ability. Um, it is called Sacrifice. So when the squad battles, you can destroy the uh, warrior, and you can, get, you can choose one of two buffs. You can either get plus six attack or plus six defense to the stack for the rest of the battle, but it removes that warrior from the game. So he's going to go under my graveyard, making so sure I don't... can't summon him from discard again. Yeah, so he's just he explodes. He's just bones all over the place. And I, I don't know what... I think you're taking a defense buff, would be my guess. Yeah, it's unfortunate we can't exactly know what we're doing here. Um, you play... Oh, the Dryadunes, and I got oh, Necromancers, okay. so... So what's funny is this play, I was just trying to get the card back to my hand, because the buff doesn't work. It, it's a buff based on uh, sewn cards. Right. So instead, um, yeah, I gained some defense, and that guy dies. I think I went attack. I think I just wanted a suicide bomb and yeah. get you out of there. And then um, it dies, but notice it doesn't go to my discard pile. It stays on the board, giving you a spawn point. And then I play another Warriors, just to get them out there. Sapling... Replenish, and actually, yeah, and uh, yeah, choosing not to use the um, not to use the ability to put the saplings. Yeah, keeping that dirt in that orange zone, just so in case you want to play something bigger. Yeah, hope, probably hoping to uh, draw black bark defenders to summon there. Yeah, or you do have a hero that has regrow as well, right? Yes. Well, one of the design things I really enjoy about this game is that there's only nine cards perfection, 
and each of the heroes is kind of just like a really big, awesome version of one of your other units. And I think that like, it seems like that might be a little bit boring, but honestly, it's pretty awesome. Like you just end up with, uh, I have a necromancer unit, but I have a super powerful necromancer unit, or so you, I have, uh, you know. So you can kind of absorb the deck knowledge really quickly. Yeah. Like I think in the in the skull deck you have a card called Chanters which can unsummon units when it walks into the uh, enemy squad but then you have the robed figure which is like a, a monstrous chanter and it just it's like oh you know you look at that ability like oh that's cool I wish I had more of that whoa I have this cool hero card that does that even better and yeah it looks like I drew the uh, the defenders yeah so I'm playing some Chanters so like I said um, those guys have an ability. It is called uh, Fear. So when the squad moves into an enemy squad zone, I can return up to three common units with a cost of two or less in that zone to their controller's hand. And that's bad for you, because- That's super bad, because the, um, the Black Bark Defenders that I just paid to summon there would just bounce back to my hand, and then there would be no uh, no zone card there. Yeah, yeah, there'd be no zone yeah, card so there. So you're reading that and you're like double taking that it's going to be as bad as it's going to be. <laughs> yep. And and the thing that's especially bad about that is Black Bark Defenders is a, a three movement cost unit or three activation unit. Yeah. So you really do want to get that dirt out there so you can get him deep and into the field. But um, these chanters can just bounce him back to the hand. So we and there are only two to activate, so it's going to cost me four to unsummon all that. So. So, That's what I'm tr trying to threaten here. Yeah, so usually the way you have to deal with Chanters is you have to go in. You have to... So Chanters ability triggers when they walk into you. That's right. So if you walk into them, then it, um, it, doesn't, then it doesn't fire. But you're not spending six to move that dude up, so... I, let's see. Nah. No, okay. Just gonna, just gonna concede that guy. But positioning um, to get your other guys in there. All right, and all the all the units are in separate spots, so you have to pay activation over and over to. It's not like, so the way that Chanters is written, if they were all in the same stack, you could move into the stack and bounce all of them. That's right. I mean, I could move through a bunch of different stuff, but you have to pay the activation over and over. That's right. It's trying to make me pay for it. And what is that unit you just played? Also, uh, the um, Klaskin. It's the one that uh, when okay. you when you kill an opponent's unit, yeah, got you it. can. You can sew them into the ground. All right, so I play a bone knife cultists, and they're a uh, they're not undead. They're actually humans, and uh, they cost four, and they're a six two, so they're very very aggressive. But when the unit is destroyed, I may summon a reanimated unit into the zone this unit occupied without paying the initiative. So if I have dead guys, um, I'm able to uh, just get them back and kind of recoup the cost of those cultists. So they can be really 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 initiative efficient. So this is an interesting thing because Klaskin shifters, because I'm banking on it dealing enough damage to kill something, going in really far into enemy territory really early yeah. is not that bad because if you get a zone card there, it means you can you can spawn a hero there, you can spawn yeah. a defenders there. And I believe I blew up the um, yeah the, the Enchanter the Malik uh, guarantees defense, and so it looks like I don't get any kills. Yeah, and I think I blew up the uh, the skeleton to get plus six defense, and then Malik is a minimum four, so it was like plus ten. In defense. I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to put any dirt here. I'm not going to let you do that. And Chantress is still on the board, so yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a rough play. Yeah, that took you a lot of time. You still your turn, so you can get to do a crystal purchase. And you're going to grab the, uh, the Steer's crown, so getting extra attack. Yeah, but I think the whole reason for the crystal purchase is I know I'm not going to be able to hold that ground. I know yes. that Chantress is going to come in. I know that the other one is only sapling, so I need to take a crystal while I can. And What's just... nice about this, I'm, I'm getting this crystal for cheap because like I, I have five initiative. And I lose one um, for going in there because the, uh, the shield wall ability of the defender... Um, just when, when an enemy unit walks into his zone, he, he makes you spend initiative to do that. Yep. But I'm looking, I'm looking good. Whenever you can buy a crystal and you have a bunch of initiative in the bank, that's, that's great. Like, that's what you want. Yeah, when you can buy a crystal and not give your opponent a giant turn. Yeah, so you're only going to four, and that's, I'm, I'm feeling good about right. that So, one. and to, uh, to match, uh, <laughs> I have the attack crystal, you have the uh, plus four defense crystal. Yeah. Kind of a few, little bit of a chicken there. If you activate, I will. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> you'll wait for me to activate it and then you won't activate yours. You know, it's a little bit of a double blind mind game there. Yeah. But which, it just, which we're, we're known to enjoy. All right, let's take another swing at this. One, two, three. So three come out. Another claw skin. So this is a six of in the uh, in the Leaf Clan deck. So you're gonna gotcha. uh, yeah. 
and it has five attack. And so again, you didn't. You yeah, these chanters and and was it the. Uh, it's Chanters and a Bone Knife Cultist? Yeah, yeah so uh, I think the defense on that stack is pretty low. Yeah, it's not very good. But I at least get to summon a unit back. And you got value out of Chanters. Like oh, you, yeah. Yeah, bouncing Black Bark back to hand after I paid for it. Uh, and lost the dirt, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to decide, is, is there a world in which getting the four defense like does anything? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I just got to spend something and try to, like, you know, either win the combat through you know, trading, but I'm, I know I'm going to get the Bone Knife. The Bone Knife's going to come and help out, so Ancestral Knights. Now, some interesting timing stuff here. Um, this is Knights. I'm using it as a combat card, but in my discard pile, I only have a Warriors, so that goes in. I don't get to use the Knights because the Knights are discarded at the end of the combat. Yeah, so you can't use it as a battle card and then use it also for Bone Knife Cultist. Yeah, so that's the unfortunate thing for me is that they... Uh, I could have had a knight there if I had been a little bit more savvy with um, getting them in the discard pile, but I'm, I'm my my uh, my little warriors are a consolation prize. So yeah, so there's one stone card because Clawskin killed units, and then the other one, Saplings died, and Saplings also becomes a stone card. Right, but the the great thing here is that yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm we're thinking about it. I think we ended up checking the rules on this, but that's the uh, that's the ruling on it. Um, but we're looking at it now. But what I'm looking at, as far as gameplay goes, is I'm able to buy another crystal because I was able to drop a unit in that zone after the combat. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's part of what was so good about stacking the chanters and the cultists together, was that even in a world where they die, hopefully everything dies, but I keep a unit in the zone and I can buy something. So looking at that, I got Soren's Bounty, and this one, and not, that's not Soren's Bounty. This is Orin's Terror, which Orin's bounces Terror, the yeah. saplings, which means I have nothing yeah. on the board now. Yeah, so I try to do the tempo play here and just get another crystal, put you at five, but I clear the board, and I'm still threatening to yep. get a third crystal here. Yeah, so, so you're, you're both ahead on crystals, and you, uh, you have the board. Yeah, I think it's going to matter a lot, though, that that's a 2-2 two -two and not like a 4-4 four -four or something over there in the, uh, in the orange zone. So let's see what you do about that. Well, so I can summon directly to that zone because That's right. we're... Two saplings draw. All right, so we get the replenish. Probably fishing for another defenders or the hero. Yeah. I think you might have gotten him. However, the the fact that there's two zone cards there doesn't mean that you get to summon two things. It you always discard all the zone cards when you regrow a unit. Yeah. Uh, no no dice on the hero, so it looks like another black bark defenders. Sure, and that's a... It's still 8 defense. It's still yeah. it's still super strong to have right, there. Right, right, It's only 3 attack, but that's plenty to get rid of Ancestral Warriors. Yeah. And Ancestral Warriors, he can't use his ability to just exactly. blow himself up and have nothing there. Yeah. If, uh, I could. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to just give you the zone for free. And yeah, it, it just means that the battle immediately ends if, they're, if either you or I yeah. don't have guys there. Yeah, so if I had had that 4... Four attack, four health unit. There, I could possibly use another combat card to either kill your your dude or um or even just or survive, just survive and then threaten the third crystal. But because I could use my uh, my shield to do that, so th this is this is like a huge turn for you. Yeah. So now I don't control both zones, so I'm not able to uh, to purchase a crystal, even though I have people in both. I mean, I could walk some knights up and then put another guy in the purple zone and So the thing is, ancest for it. even Ancestral Warriors, who are pretty cheap, they cost uh, two and then one to move. So I think yeah. I, I don't think the initiative was there to make that play. No. And uh, let's see, Bone Knife Cultists come out and they're going to stick behind the Ancestral Knights. Um, yeah, uh, I have no hand. And one of the things I like to do when I play as Skull, I don't know if it's like 100% correct, but... They have some really strong combat options, just <laughs> off the top. Like, they're just good in combat, but I try to utilize Undying as much as possible. When I can summon uh, units from the discard pile, if they're reanimated. So you don't necessarily need to replenish as soon as you think you would. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes you just play good combat options, and when your opponent can't really play around, you know, whether or not I'm saving Sinlore or something, it can be a little bit intimidating to get into a combat with a, a no-hand Skull player. Um, but I'll probably need some cards. I think I'm, I am going to replenish at some point here. Because uh, what am I really doing with initiative uh, other than moving guys around here? All right, so taking the Crystal Zone and then playing uh, Emerald Coven. And a lot of a lot of clans have this style of unit, have like a 7-1-1 or like a 6-2-1 or something like that. 
So Emerald Coven is a, a 721 and lets you reorder a squad when you move into it, which yeah. means that I can move into that squad in the center and have Ancestral Warriors not be on top so you don't get the ability. Yeah, I just get a really bad 2-2 two, two for 2, which is like one of the worst units in the game, honestly. 2-2 <laughs> um, two, two for 2 sounds good in other games, but not in this one. And uh, I, I bundle the stack up. Uh, and I'm going to try to clear that guy out. I lose an initiative for moving yeah, in. You, exactly. I was going to say, you paid the initiative. Yeah. And I think I'm going to fight and then probably replenish. But I'm still going to have to top deck. So I'd rather, I'd rather like fight okay. before I replenish because I want to hand a five cards when I'm done. So let's see what happens here. So I only have one card left in hand. And this is an interesting thing about this game. A lot of times... Uh, people will hold, you know, like battle cards that are really good or whatnot. You know, you'll hold a hero card. And so if they have one card left and you make them spend it, sometimes you get something good. Yeah. The Necromancer is just a, uh, you know, defensive card. Yeah. But it looks like it was just Black Bark. Um, yeah. And it comes back to my hand. So that means next turn I can still play Black Bark, grow it in that spot and have something. Yeah. And then um, I summon a Knights from Discard Pile instead of Replenishing. Bad. So I'm just trying to threaten, like, hey, if you, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at two crystals already. If you don't take these guys out, or you don't go to, uh, you know, go to that zone, I'm threatening to just, yeah. So there take goes, my third one. So there goes the uh, seven attack to go in there and try and dive bomb that whole squad. Yeah, putting the bone knife cultist in the front, followed by the two two, and then the four four at the end. And interestingly, you know exactly what my battle card is, but you can't do anything about it because your hand is empty. Like That's right. I'm in guarding. Okay, I'm oh, gonna okay. shield up. All right, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just negate it. Like you need to win this combat, so. Yeah, I need to be. I, I need this to be a, a trade for the whole thing. Blade dancers. I think plus five defense. I don't know that that's enough to save it. So Yeah. But actually, that might be even be worse for me because it means I lose the card. Yeah, I think it dies. Um, knights survive, and the cultists live. They die simultaneously. So, or sorry, the cultists die at the same time. So I'm not able to put the 2-2 uh, the two -two back in the stack. So you getting some extra value out of removing my Blade Dancer, my, uh, my Bone Knife Cultists yeah, without me being able to trigger it because I played the Ancient Knights. So the, the Ancestral Knights play is actually like, you're blowing me out here because if I had had that in the discard pile, I would have had 8-8 eight, eight of stats up there um, in the in the orange zone, and that's like really nice to just spend two to walk in and then invade. But instead, there's nothing. There, there's no uh, reanimated units in her discard pile, so that's just a waste. You yeah, just, it's just an overpayment for. Uh, yeah. So now I'm gonna use. Um, go to. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm getting in there. Horse of Spirits moves into the home zone because I don't have anything. That, I I didn't leave anything behind to protect me. Yeah. And so now I'm looking at you know. I'm holding the orange zone. I got the purple zone is, is empty, and all I have to do is replenish and walk some guys in there to buy the last crystal. But I'm trying to restrict his movement, um, and, and also this inviting is just... you to kind of walk up and get go to the purple one, and then just you know buy a crystal, and go well, for it. Well, so also we we've talked a fair amount about how crystals are, are really expensive, but doing plays like this with your crystal abilities are a way to kind of lower the price of them. That's right. Now your opponent has to fight and get you out and do all the stuff and eat up all their initiative instead of using it to mount a comeback. Yeah, and it looks like that one Sone card that was left is going to let you summon your hero now, right? Uh, yeah, that's the... Yes. So the hero got summoned into the uh, into the center. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Old Not Hollow. Yeah, so he's a, he's a big boy. He's 6'10". Yeah, and he's got, he's got regrow, so of course he can get there. He also has this really neat throw ability. So at the beginning of this squad's activation, you can choose a common unit in or adjacent to the squad's zone and then place the unit in the squad zone or an adjacent zone. That could be your units or theirs. So you yeah. can get extra movement or you can kick them out. And then, you know, right here, you could kick them out and buy a crystal if you wanted to. And there's just some fun flavor there that you pick them up and throw them. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the card art shows uh, moving uh, one of the other heroes. Mm -hmm. So this is bad for me. Like, he, he summoned a guy to block um, my ability to mill him with the Ancestral Knights. And also controlling, basically controlling all three crystal zones. I finally have to replenish after all this time, um, just to look for some options so that I can kick out some of these guys. And I see Sinlor in the uh, in, in my hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. So if so, Sinlor is one of the strongest battle cards in the game. Sinlor lets you um, kind of, if you win the battle flip, you get to blow up their whole squad basically. Yes. So potentially, if 
you win a battle flip, you can get that hero out. I think I play the robed figure, and that's essentially like chanters, except it can um, bounce things that have a cost three of cost. three or less. Yeah. So that means. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's three or less. Yeah, but that means Dryden's for sure is coming back to my hand. <laughs> right. And I'm actually looking at you know if I just march that road figure up all the way through uh, the purple and the blue zone. It would bounce everything along the way, except, yeah. for, the, except for the other hero. Yeah, so I, I, can't, I can't get rid of Not Hollow. He's, he's too tough. I think he's just gonna chill at orange zone for quite a while. And similar to Chanters, I think the way you combat this is you, you take the fight to them. So my guess is that, uh, no, Dryden's doesn't really have enough attack to make that happen, but like probably the, what you would wanna see is either not hollow or dryden's or somebody move into the home zone and take the fight to roped figure so he doesn't bounce everything yeah he's a two eight he's pretty tough yeah so that's the that's the big that's actually the biggest difference between it and chanters so yeah. chanters is one defense is you send anything to oh, it no, you can no, you no. can kill it yeah so roped figure at eight defense that means its ability potentially fires multiple times. It costs the same as Chanters too. He's only costs three. Yeah, so it's so it's she's a very dangerous <clears throat> unit and only activates for two. So you can totally march across the board. Yeah, so I think the defense stat is actually like more so than the cost. It's uh, than the cost of what it can bounce. Yeah, the defense stat is what really makes it scary. Mm -hmm. Well, it's when I move into an enemy squad zone. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm and so I was Sinlor in hand. Um, it's, it's you. So I know you've been like. We haven't really talked about this much, but you've been playing kind of around um, the possibility of Sin Lore. Like when you play against Skull Clan, you have to be really wary of using bold options. Because if they play Sin Lore, then potentially you lose your whole stack. Now, to be fair, I haven't been playing like lots of big stacks, but. Yeah, and also I've been top decking stuff. So yes. it's, it's been easier for you to play around it. But with a full replenish, and I, I immediately got him. So now it's a problem. So here I see this, and I'm like, well, maybe. Maybe I can play uh, oh, similar so, here. So but... moving into home zone and not fighting. Yeah. So now you have to pay the activation to get me out. But I'm oh, wow. all right. So now I'm getting you out of my home zone. I think yeah, I'm fighting you. Yeah. I play ancient warrior. You got saplings. Warrior just gives you attack. So I get enough attack. So we get a trade. Yeah. And saplings makes us both like mill cards, right? Not how I'm gonna fight. Is that how that works? Uh, no, Sapling's, uh, Sapling's just gives defense for some cards. It's it's kind of a null card. Oh, okay. So there was no reason to play that as the battle card in terms of getting stuff. It probably was just the only thing in my hand I didn't want to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was actually your combat. You actually did initiate that. Yeah, so what happens was Dryden moves into your home zone, no battle, then battle in my home zone, and now battle for the center. Gotcha. And probably what happened was I wanted to hold uh, Wisp Willows to, uh, to get the bonus attack. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so now you control two zones. It's my turn. Reapers is activating whenever those uh, warriors die, and I'm losing cards at the top of my deck. So I'm going to play a Bone Knife Cultus, and that's my turn right there. So, look, so you can you can go ahead and buy a crystal. I'm looking at three already, so one, two, three, this is your second five, one if you choose to do it. So me. getting a replenish action here. Yep. And then I'm gonna buy one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, nine, firm grasp nine. of the blue and orange zones at the moment, and then just mucking up my. Uh, and the great thing movement. about having Dryden's in your home zone is that as soon as you kill it, I'm gonna have a zone card there, which means I'll be able to summon like defenders into your home or you know. Yeah, totally. Uh, can I see your discard? Sinlor? Sinlor is not in the okay. discard. Looking in the discard pile for checking, Sinlor. Yeah, checking for Sinlor. Okay. I have enchanted yep. Malik. Okay. Deciding if you have to hang on to your guarded options. And uh, funny enough, I think the only card in my hand is Sinlor. So if you initiate a combat right now, I'm actually forced to play him. And he has like a, a drawback too. If, if you. If you play if Guarded you or Tricky, him, yeah. I destroy all units I control. So I would have lost the, the rope figure like right away if you, if you initiated a fight and you didn't pick Bold. Yeah, sorry. Three. Um, so I'm actually, I, I must replenish here, but I'm still trying to okay. hide that. <laughs> you know, like, all right, just a score and taking Foxtail. Yeah, that one lets you attack from the back of the stack instead of the, uh, the front. So if I'm trying to hide like weak targets behind things, 
you get to just you know cheat the combat. And so I think it. I was just trying to take the cheapest crystal I could in that case, yeah. but uh, the, leaving twin crystal there intentionally. Yeah. So I'm playing Sinlor, it's paid the cost, which is you must sacrifice a unit when you do it, but I'm sacrificing bone knife cultists and getting an ancient knight, or an ancestral knight, so it's not really that bad, um, and I, I kind of make it up immediately. And Sinlor is gonna die anyway. I'm just, you have the foxtail, I can't really hide him, and the other, the other units are too important for me to keep alive. Like I maybe could have put him in the center of the stack, but I think you'll probably find a way to, to kill him. And I think keeping robed figure is probably more important. Yeah, totally. Because if you lose Sinlor, you can still resummon him. Yeah, so here I'm trying, yeah, because he's reanimated. Yes. Um, or he's undying, rather. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying here, I'm gonna do a combat first where I don't choose. What I'm going to do, that way when I replenish, I will have a hand of five cards instead of four. Really? I don't want to use any of these. Um, and now that I know Sinlor is on the board, all the combat options are open. Yeah, you're not afraid anymore. So I get a Chantry's out. Uh, plus five tricky, tricky. Yeah, so we both get bonus attack. Not, no, okay. Not, yeah, so I think I just lose Sinlor and you lose your Drydunes. And again, it uh, sews so, into that yeah. spot. Two. And then we're going to go one, two, two three, four, two, five, six. Two. And bounce the saplings. Okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to keep those ancestral knights back there so I can threaten that final thing and say, yep, you got to deal with this road figure. If you can't, it's game over. Yeah, so you're at three crystals and I'm only at two. So yeah. I can't let you hold those even for one turn. Yeah, and I, and I thought about bringing the knights with me just to give more uh, defense there, just to sort of let the rope figure have some buffer. But I'm looking at that zone card in my home zone thinking like, well, if you just summon something there and start attacking my base, I'm not going to be able to get out. Like, it's going to be really tough to uh, to make it. Kesslia. Kesslia. So we have a hero summon, which... Uh, has eight attack. Yes. And that's exactly what now I'm regretting. Now I'm regretting it, not putting those ancient knights out there. Back to my hand. And if I win this, if I would have won it, I would have gotten some defense oh, and you kill off this ancestral yeah. knights. Oh, but it looks no. like I'm going to lose the robe figure here. Get that yeah. out of here. And for free, Kessley is going to survive this combat. Right. So this this is a that was a huge 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 and that, blowout. That was exactly what needed to happen there. And Kesslia is <laughs> Kesslia is also a hero. There's only one of her in the deck, and there isn't a lot of stuff right. that. I mean, maybe an Emerald Coven with uh, an attack buff, but there's not that much that um, Leaf Clan could have played there with the amount of initiative they had to get out of that. Yeah. So I'm looking through the discard pile, trying to find some reanimated stuff so I don't have to... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to okay. make six worth of warriors from the discard pile and say, okay. And let me take the crystal. Yeah, take it, because I can just move everything up. I can fight Kesslia, I can maybe get even get to your home square and start trying to mill your deck. Yeah, so probably the play here is uh, drop something in home zone and then score and take Judge of Fate. Yeah, Judge of Fate being able to cheat the combat. It's also really great that- And that um, still leaves Twin Crystal on the board, which makes it scary to move those Ancestral Warriors out. That's yeah, right. I think I know the obvious thing. Because Twin Crystal, you can score if you have guys. Um, oh, okay. I'm blocking you from moving. Yeah, and that's why I, I fortified. I had to make sure that you know there was a way to get out. Yeah. Yeah. And you can chain suicide or no? Uh, yes, you can. And then we are going. So it's still your turn. Didn't spend a whole lot doing that. Those guys only cost two, right? Yeah, it only cost two. Man. But they're slow to walk across the board, and you know, yeah, that, so that's you, the drawback. Yeah, exactly. If you if, if you move them here, normally, you probably here. messed up. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you want to just grow them. Because paying three, three is three, so eight, expensive, right? yeah. Yeah. Summon it to a crystal zone you control. And then I think you're going to buy that Judge of Fate, right? Or are you going to grab the Foxtail? Let's see what you do. Um, sorry, the uh, twin crystal. Yeah, twin crystal to prevent me from possibly being able to uh, to walk in and like clear stuff and then buy, because those knights could make it up there and win the fight against the uh, sapling. And you only got four. You just got that's the exact amount of attack that the ancestral knights have. No, which is not enough to actually score a crystal. You have to go right. one over the deck amount. Yeah. So I'm going to need something, okay, like, twice, yeah. that's looking like my strategy right now. I cannot get Not Hollow out of that zone. 
Unless I send the whole pack up there if it lives, but... You could Ancestral Warriors and blow up two of them for attack, maybe? One, maybe, but even button. then, I have to control two zones at the end because One, you're sitting at three crystals now. You jump back from well, having Well, also, you zero. have to win a combat here at home. You'll probably lose an Ancestral Warrior along the way. At, totally. Yeah, those stats aren't great. So, we're gonna fight first. Okay. Right here. Yeah, there are my six of them. I'm doing math here. The eight defense is what's really bugging me here. I think so. Because I would love to just say, hey, if I, you know... If I spend this guy as a defense or something, then I'm able to get through it, but I gotta do it as attack. And I might lose warriors in the process. And you still have to top deck the battle card. Right. Chanters. Okay, Chanters. Plus five, they're all good. And you get some bonus attack. Yeah, I don't need attack, right? So you're gonna end up killing one of the warriors, because um, they only have two attack, two defense. And I couldn't, I couldn't guarantee that I would get attack out of this, so I had to do that. So now, it's not really possible for me to, uh, I did, right? Like, I have enough to to run both the knights and the warriors up there to try and win the fight, but I need both to survive. And I'm counting it out. Like, I need both to survive, but maybe I need, I think I need another warrior in the stack. So luckily I can summon it from the discard pile. Spending two, and now I'm going to bring the whole pack with me. Because see, if you didn't take that twin crystal, this could have been really bad for you. I could leave one behind, send the rest of the pack in, kill this sapling, and then immediately buy it. But instead, I'm trying to, to survive here and have my units live and then kill your sapling and also And then be able also to do a mill. Yeah. I gotta do six damage, yeah. So I'm destroying this. And I think I chose attack here because um, I knew that I needed my guys to live. But because of the fact that you could spend like some defense card and then potentially survive, I, I just I couldn't risk it. No, I have to do attack. Sorry, because you only have two damage. Yeah, I think you're waffling on it here. I think it's the like no, attack, gonna... defense. I don't know. Yeah, I, there's, there has to be a better option or a right option if I spent more time thinking about it. But maybe maybe there wasn't. And I pull blade dancers off the top, which and we get the hero flip to give the guaranteed extra four attack. Yeah, so I actually get defense out of it. So you but get you get the guaranteed four attack, and that's enough to kill doesn't beat my, shield. my uh, yeah my front guy. And now I only have four attack on the board, and the fact that he has not hollow and that um, and Kesslia in those spots, I don't have the I can't mill twice. I'm one initiative away from being able to mill twice. If I had gotten that. Because if I was at two, I could jump it to one and attack two times and do eight, eight damage to his deck. But because I have exactly four cards left in deck, it's not enough. It's not enough. By, by one initiative and by one card, I'm about to lose this game. It's incredible, like, just how tight that ended up being. So if only that Skeleton Knight had survived, you know, if only, um, you know, you weren't able to have put in that Sewn uh, unit in my base, I would have had plenty of time to move across the board. And... You were able to buy yeah. the twin crystal the turn before. So yeah, here I am just milling it ceremoniously and that's gonna be a GG. Yeah. So all three of these games went so close to the wire. Yeah, these were great. Yeah, yeah I like this game a lot. Um, I, I have fun um, playing pretty much all the factions. There's so many interesting interactions. Yeah, and I love how different they are. Like putting yeah. stone cards on the board feels very different from any other faction. I'm, I'm looking at the blade dancers. I never got a chance to find them or play them. And what's funny about that is one of their abilities is when they kill something, they get, you get one, initiative. one initiative. So if I had done that at all during like maybe the entire game, I would have had enough <laughs> to be able to do it. It's crazy how tight this ends up being. Yeah, I think we're actually like searching through to be like, okay, what's the what's the best uh, defense buff card? Like maybe you should have. Yeah, maybe um, I could have just buffed my defense and survived, but I was still too wary that I wouldn't be able to clear the saplings. But yeah, anyway, GG. Yeah, this was a great set, and um, I'm you know glad yeah. to play some more Crystal Clan soon.